All right, we're talking about color of law today, so let's get going. So what we're going to discuss are all statutes are color of law, all statutes are voluntary, all statutes are full of fraud. The kangaroo courts are there to enforce the contract. The kangaroo courts are not competent to do justice. The absolute best that could be expected is the appearance of justice, which is a fraud. The kangaroo courts are holding a satanic religious ceremony to collect revenue for their handlers because everything they do is a fraud. It's a lie. Again, and the reason it's Satanism is because it's a lie and it's a fraud. And, um, and so, because um, Satanism is all about lies and fraud. Uh, this is a U.S. Supreme Court. It is impossible to prove jurisdiction exists ex absent a substantial nexus with the state, such as voluntary subscription to license. All jurisdictional facts supporting the claim uh, that supposed jurisdiction exists must appear in the record of the court. Okay, so, and that's the Bill Priest in the U.S. Supreme Court, Pipeline versus Marathon, quoting Kroll versus Benson. Uh, so again, it is impossible to prove jurisdiction absent a substantial nexus with the state, such as a voluntary subscription to a license. Okay, it's a contract. When acting to enforce a statute and its subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of a municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity. Courts administering and enforcing statutes do not act judicially but merely ministerially, merely act as an extension or agent for the involved agency but only in a ministerial and not a discretionary capacity. Okay, so when acting to enforce a statute, okay, it's their clerks. They're masquerading as a judge. They're working for the prosecutor. It's a kangaroo court. Uh, it is the accepted rule, not only in state courts, but of the federal courts as well, that when a judge is enforcing administrative law, they're described as mere extensions of the administrative agency for superior reviewing purposes. Okay, so it's a clerk. He's masquerading as a judge. He's working for the prosecutor. It's a kangaroo court. Judges who become involved in enforcement of mere statutes, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved agency. And that's uh, uh, Casey Davis, Administrative Law. Color means an appearance or semblance, a smokrum as distinguished from that which is real. In other words, it's a fraud, a prima facie or apparent right, hence a deceptive appearance, a fraud, a plausible assumed exterior, a fraud, a concealing a lack of reality, a disguise or a pretext, a fraud, a, a, a lie. Color signifies a probable plea, but which is in fact false, okay, a lie, a fraud, and that's Tomlin's Law Dictionary, uh, 1835 edition, and the other one was Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. Colorable means that which is in appearance only and not in reality what it purports to be, hence counterfeit, feign, having the appearance of truth, a fraud, a lie. Colorable, this is Canadian, uh, Barron's Dictionary of Canadian Law. Uh, a colorable presenting an appearance that does not correspond with reality and or an appearance intended to conceal or deceive. And that's, uh, um, again, the Canadian Law Dictionary. Uh, a color of law, the appearance or semblance without the substance of legal right, misuse of power, possessed by virtue of state law and made possible only because the wrongdoer is clothed with authority. The state is action taken under color of law. It's a fraud. It's a lie. They're nothing but thieves and pirates. Uh, color of law, this is again a dictionary of Canadian law. Uh, a mere semblance of legal right and action done under color of law is one done with apparent authority of the law but actually in contravention of the law. They're thieves, they're pirates, they're criminals. Colorability, this is uh, taken from uh, Constitutional Law of Canada uh, by, uh, by Hogg, okay, who is some law professor or something like that in Canada. Uh, anyways, colorability, a doctrine invoked when a statute is addressed to a matter outside jurisdiction, though it bears the formal trappings of a matter within jurisdiction of the enacting legislature. It's a fraud, okay? It's a fraud. It's a lie. 
Uh, ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power from the legislature. Their acts in attempting to exercise such powers are necessarily nullities, okay? So, in other words, when a judge turns himself into a clerk, that he cannot do things like issue warrants, issue court orders. It's a fraud. It's a nullity. They're nothing but a bunch of thieves. They are the lowest form of life that lives, and they ought to be exterminated off the face of this planet, in my opinion, and I would really love to see some of them. Before uh, 1900, they used to hang judges on a regular basis, and I'd like to see that come back. Okay, that's what needs to happen. Um, think about it, boys and girls. If they have to get your consent okay, which is a contract to obtain jurisdiction, and if all judges become clerks working for the prosecutor when enforcing any statute, and if a clerk masquerading as a judge cannot do anything judicial, then, think about it, boys and girls, all statutes are a color of law. All statutes have to be consented to. All statutes are satanic. Full, they're full of fraud and deception, and a code is a compilation taken from statutes, which means that code is worth less than a statute. And think about it. Who makes those statutes? A bunch of bail priests in the legislature, in this corporation, okay? They're nothing but a bunch of thieves. They're supposed to be protecting people, and they're passing these co fictitious color of law statutes, you know, if it was up to me, you know what I would do to a bunch to the the every last one of these 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 uh, criminals in the legislature. The code is only prima facie evidence of the laws of the United States. Where an inconsistency with the United States code and the statutes at large it appears, the statutes at large prevail over the code. And this is uh, Pert versus uh, Motor Vessel Bearing Explorer. Uh, um, 1974, and that's actually citing U.S. Supreme Court cases. Uh, it's well settled that the code cannot prevail over the statutes at large when the two are inconsistent. Uh, uh, the provisions of the code are merely prima facie evidence of the law, prima facie at first appearance. And uh, again, uh, uh, this is basically saying that codes are not are worth even less than the statutes. And um, But the legislature specifically disclaimed any intention to change the meaning of any statute. The compilers of the code were not empowered by Congress to amend existing law and doubtless had no thought of doing so. The act before us does not purport to amend a section of an act, but only a compilation, a section of a compilation entitled uh, uh, Revised Code of Washington, which is not the law. Such an act purporting to amend only a section of our prima facie compilation leaves the law unchanged. And that's uh, uh, Washington State uh, uh, bail priests. Um, and this is Downs versus Bidwell. This is a very interesting case. Um, and um, uh, I would encourage everyone to get a copy of this case and, and read it because um, this is very interesting. Um, anyways, uh, it's it was insisted that Congress could act in a double capacity as one as legislating for the states and in the other as a local legislature for the District of Columbia. In the latter character, it was admitted that the power of levying direct taxes might be exercised but for district purposes only. Okay, think about that. What they're saying here in the latter character, okay, which is a legislature for the District of Columbia, it was admitted that the power of levying direct taxes might be exercised but for the district of purposes only okay and so think about it direct taxes can only be done so that means income tax is for DC that's why they want to know if you're a US citizen that's why they're busy fabricating evidence that there's a US citizen out there so we can steal your property so we can give you an article 1 plenary military tribunal so we can we can impose our military dictatorship on you um, anyways, and it goes on, uh, the state legislature might tax for state purposes, but it could not legislate for the district, uh, giving Congress the power to lay and collect taxes, which shall be uniform throughout the United States, inasmuch as the district was no part of the United States. Okay, and so, so uh, uh, as far as, as, as taxes are concerned, the district is not part of the United States. That's what they're saying here. Think about it. 
And then it goes, it says, eliminating then from the opinions of the court all expressions unnecessary to the disposition of the particular case and gleaning therefrom the exact point decided in each, the following propositions may be considered as established. Okay, and so we're going to go through about six propositions. Actually, there's only about four of them that are really important to the topic of discussion here. Uh, uh, but, um, you know, it'll, uh, we'll, we'll cover them all. Um, and point number one is that the District of Columbia and the territories are not states within the judicial clause of the Constitution. And so, again, D.C. and the territories are not states within the judicial clause of the Constitution. That the territories are not states, uh, um, and they're uh, pursuant to this federal statute. Okay, the, and then point three is that the District of Columbia and the territory are states, as that word is used with in treaties with foreign powers. Uh, and then they talk about ownership, disposition of inheritance of property. Okay, and so again, if you read the DC Code, it talks about uh, ownership of property, and it talks about Sestake Trust, and it talks about all of that stuff, okay? And so that's that's where this is coming from, okay? So D.C. is a state as far as foreign powers and treaties are concerned. And so, uh, and the territories are states. And so if you think about it, when it talks about a state in in the, well, we're going to go into that uh, in, in, the, uh, in the federal codes, okay? They're talking about as far as treaties with foreign powers are concerned. Uh, number four, that the territories are not within the clause of the Constitution providing for the creation of a Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court of the United States does not have jurisdiction in the territories, okay? And if they appeal something and it goes to, actually it'll go to the Supreme Court of the District of Columbia is where it'll go. And such inferior courts of Congress may seem to fit to establish, okay? So uh, the Supreme Court of the United States and the uh, 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 inferior courts uh, do not apply in the territories. Uh, that the Constitution does not apply in foreign countries or, or to trials therein. And that's, uh, you know, a foregone conclusion. And that where the Constitution has once been formally extended by Congress to territories, uh, uh, neither Congress nor the territorial legislature can enact laws inconsistent therewith. So once they extend the, the, um, the Constitution to the territory, uh, then that's set in stone and they cannot undo it. And they cannot... Uh, um, uh, enact laws uh, inconsistent with that. Uh, the laws of Congress in respect of those matters outside the Constitution of Delegated Powers do not extend to the territorial limits of the states but have force only within the District of Columbia and other places that are within the exclusive jurisdiction of the national government. And so again, and that's U.S. the bail priests in the Supreme Court and and again the, the, they're talking about the, the Congress operating in, in those two distinct capacities, okay, as the uh, uh, the legislature for D.C. and also as for the states, and um, and so uh, uh, these laws of Congress uh, do not uh, 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 extend uh, uh, to anywhere but uh, uh, in the D.C. and the territories uh, when they're doing something that is not within the, the Constitution. And this is uh, National Mutual Insurance Company of D.C. versus Tidewater Transfer Company, corporations, notice that. It says, we therefore decline to overrule the opinion of Chief Justice Marshall. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article 3 of the Constitution. Remember, they talked about that in Downs versus Mid Bidwell. And then it says, uh, if it goes on, and if you look at the underlying part, in other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of D.C. and through their plenary power, that's military dictatorship, boys and girls, nationally covers those citizens even in one of the several states, as though the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. Okay, so think about it, boys and girls. If you're a U.S. citizen, then then you get the D.C. courts, you get the military dictatorship, you get an Article I court, there's no such thing as an Article III court, and, and, and it's a kangaroo court. A kangaroo court is a term descriptive of a sham legal proceeding in which a person's rights are totally disregarded in which the result is a foregone conclusion because of the bias of the court or other tribunal. And that's exactly what goes on. A mixed war is one which is made by one side by public authority and by, and by a mere private persons on the other side. Under the international law of warfare, all parties to a clause must appear by a non degur because an alien enemy cannot maintain an action during a war in his own name. Okay, so think about it. That's what they're doing. What do you think they're doing?
doing with that that uh, uh, all block capital letters name under Roman civil law? That's a nom de guerre. And, and they're making war on you. It's commercial transaction. This is all warfare. Capitus diminutio, meaning the diminishing of status through the use of capitalization. So under Roman civil law, status is everything. Under common law, status is nothing. And so they're, they're putting you under their Roman civil law, their satanic Roman civil law, so then they can go and make warfare on you and, uh, and make some money for their bankster thieves. Capitus diminutio media, meaning the median loss of status through the use of capitalization. Uh, uh, and then and they're showing an example here, John Doe with the last name, all block capital letters. That's what the pigs do in Canada. A lesser medium loss of status has occurred where a man loses his rights of citizenship without loses his liberty. Uh, a capitus diminutio maximum means a maximum loss of status. Okay, this is all statuses under Roman civil law. This is this is under coming from the Vatican. John Doe or John Doe, Doe John, okay, it's all block capital letters, the highest and most comprehensive loss of status. This occurred when a man's condition was changed from one of freedom to one of bondage, when he became a slave, okay, they're turning you into slaves, boys and girls. Don't you get that? It swept away all the rights of citizenship and family rights. A judgment of conviction pronounced by a court without jurisdiction is void. Okay, so it's always about jurisdiction. Uh, uh, watch my video about jurisdiction. I've uploaded it to YouTube, and it's also going to be uploaded to uh, a Vimeo, and I'm going to start uploading videos to Vimeo because Google seems to want to... Uh, to mess with me. And one imprisoned thereunder may obtain release by habeas corpus. And that's the bell priest in the Supreme Court. And uh, and so and we're going to have a video about void judgments. Once jurisdiction is challenged, it must be proven. Uh, uh, no sanctioning can be imposed absent jurisdiction. Uh, and so, uh, but what these bail priests do is they go ahead and railroad you and let you appeal it. Because then their bail priests in the Court of Appeals can make some money, can get in on the action, make some fake money. A court of general jurisdiction is presumed to be acting within its jurisdiction till the contrary is shown. Uh, um, uh, but uh, these courts, like federal courts, for example, are inferior courts of limited jurisdiction. Uh, in Alberta, the uh, general jurisdiction is the court of Queen's Bench. Uh, the provincial court is an inferior court of limited jurisdiction. Uh, uh, the burden on the defendant to show the non-existence of jurisdictional facts, so they send their pigs out to assault you and put you in the position and having to prove that they don't have jurisdiction. And and uh, and that's exactly what you do, which is almost impossible. And that's how they get to railroad you and make some money for their bankster thieves. Latches under French law, remiss of slackness. Okay, remember, French law is Roman civil law. Think about it, boys and girls. Un unreasonable delay in pursuing a right of claim, almost always an equitable one under their satanic equity in a way that prejudices the party against whom relief is sought. It's also termed sleeping on rights, and that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. Civil law, Roman law, and Roman civil law are convertible phrases, meaning the same system of jurisprudence, that rule of action which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law, to distinguish it from the law of nature and from international law. Okay, so civil law, Roman law, and Roman civil law are all the same thing in municipal law and it's all coming from the Vatican admiralty law admiralty and maritime are virtually synonymous uh, and the forms and moans and pre proceedings causes of equity and of admiralty and maritime jurisdiction shall be according to the civil law uh, there must be uniformity in maritime uh, law and the principles of maritime laws are applicable to commercial law and therefore there must be uniformity in commercial law uh, um, and what these citations are saying is that equity is a subset of Roman law, admiralty maritime law is a subset of Roman law, and commercial law is a subset of Roman law. Presumption, a presumption of fact, an inference, uh, affirmative or disaffirmative, or the truth or falsehood of any proposition or fact drawn by a process of probable reasoning in the absence of actual certainty uh, of its truth or falsehood until such certainty can be. Uh, best be ascertained okay so they, they these whores these uh, uh, satanic bail priests make presumptions of fact and uh, presumption of law rule of law that courts and judges shall draw a particular inference from a particular fact or from particular evidence unless and until the truth of such inference is approved is disapproved 
A rule which, in certain cases, either forbids or dispenses with any ulterior inquiry. Okay, that's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. So again, they make presumptions of fact and presumptions of law uh, because they intend to railroad you. They're a bunch of they're a kangaroo court. It's all coming from the Vatican. It's satanic. It's diabolically evil, boys and girls. And uh, and if we don't put a stop to this, we're going to be held accountable. Presumably fit to be assumed as true in advance and conclusive evidence, credibly deduced, fair to suppose by reasonable supposition or inference that appears to be entitled to, to believe without direct evidence. Presume to assume beforehand. Uh, in a more technical sense, to believe or accept upon probable evidence, it is not so strong a word as infer, uh, although often used with substantially the same meaning. And that's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. All statutes create certain presumptions, and if you do not know what the presumptions that the Satanic Vatican bar member clerk masquerading as a judge is taking, then they can take advantage of you in their Satanic religious ceremony. That's what these bail priests do. An unconstitutional act is not law, it confers no rights, it imposes no duties, affords no protection, it creates no office, it is in legal contemplation as inoperative as though it had never been passed. And that's the bill priest on the Supreme Court. An absolute nullity is an act that is void because it's against public policy, law, or order. The nullity is non-curable. It may be invoked by any party or by the court. That's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, adjustum generis. And so we're going to we're going to talk about some statutes now and uh, and how they're all full of fraud, okay? And how that uh, there's there's all sorts of fraud and deception in them. Uh, uh, and so that's what we're going to talk about. Adjustum generis of the same kind, class, or nature in the construction of laws, wills, and other instruments. The adjustum generis rule is that where general words follow an enumeration of persons or things by words of a particular specific meaning. Such general words are not con to be construed within their widest extent, but are to be held as applying only to persons or things of the same general kind or class as those specifically mentioned. And, uh, and it goes on and says, example. If a law refers to automobiles, trucks, tractors, motorcycles, and other motor-powered vehicles, vehicles would not include airplanes, such since the list was land-based transportation. And this is uh, that was actually uh, uh, Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. This is Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, a canon of construction, okay? Well, think about it, boys and girls. First of all, uh, it's Latin, okay? So it's coming from the Vatican. It's a canon of construction. Well, gee, that sounds like Roman civil law, that when a general word or phrase follows a list of specifics, the general word or phrase can be interpreted to include only the items of the same type as those listed. For example, in the phrase horses, cattle, sheep, pigs, goats, or any other farm animal, the, the general language or any other farm animal, despite its seeming breadth, would probably be held to include only four-legged hoofed mammals typically found on farms, thus would exclude chickens. And so, uh, but that's why it's full of fraud, okay? Because because if you don't know that, they'll take advantage of you, and they'll railroad you, and they'll collect their revenue, and they're nothing but a bunch of thieves. Include, to confine within, to hold as an enclosure, take in, attain, shut up, contain, enclose, combine, comprehend, embrace, involve. And that's uh, Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. And that is a whole bunch of sites there. This is actually taken from uh, uh, American Dictionary of English Language, Noah Webster. Include, to confine within, to hold, to contain, as the shell of a nut contains a kernel. A pearl is included in the shell. Uh, um, to comprise, to comprehend, to contain. So uh, that's, that's the same. Include, to confine within, hold as an enclosure, take in, attain, shut up, contain, enclose, combine, comprehend, embrace, involve. And that's Block's Law Dictionary, 6th edition. You, the bail priest in the U.S. Supreme Court, include or the participial form thereof is designed to comprise within, to hold, to contain, enclose, comprise, comprehend, embrace, involve. Um, so uh, expressio uh, uh, unius ex exclusio alterius, okay? So lots of Latin here, boys and girls. It's all coming from the Vatican. A canon of construction, okay? So again, uh, gee, that sounds like Roman civil law, holding that to express or include one thing implies the exclusion of the other or the alternative. For example, a rule that each citizen is entitled to vote implies that non-citizens are not entitled to vote. Uh, um, and so again... Uh, uh, that's Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition. And now we'll talk a little bit about some sites.
Okay, and this is uh, U.S. versus Minker, and this is the actual site out of the case. But the subpoena is in the form of an official command, and even though improvidently issued, it has come some coercive tendency, either because of ignorance on the part of the rights on the part of those whom it purports to command, or their natural respect for what appears to be an official command, or because of their reluctance to tech this, test the subpoena's validity by litigation. Uh, um, and that's U.S. versus Minker, the bill priest in the U.S. versus Minker. Okay, so, but I like the summary, and you'll see a lot of summaries, okay? Uh, um, because of their respect for what appears to be a law, many people are cunningly coerced into waiving their rights due to ignorance, okay? And that's the summary of what that says, uh, and it's perfectly uh, uh, correct. And, uh, and there's another summary that's uh, found at Penhallow versus Don's Administrators. I get people contacting me about this all the time. Gee, I can't find that site in that case. Well, uh, boys and girls, it's not a site. It's a summary. Uh, and so uh, this is uh, Penn Hollow versus Don's Administrators. Uh, this is the actual site. It says the distinction was taken at the bar between the state and the people of the state. It is a distinction I am not capable of comprehending. Okay, and so, uh, um, so, uh, uh, and it goes on for about two pages and explains why it's a distinction that they're not capable of comprehending. But I like this site way better because, or I should say, the summary because the summary is right here. And it says, inasmuch as every government is an artificial person, an abstraction and a creature of the mind only, a government can interface only with other artificial persons. The imaginary having neither actuality nor substance is foreclosed from creating or and attaining parity with the tangible. The legal manifestation of this is that no government, as well as any law, agency, aspect, court, etc., can concern itself with anything other than corporate artificial persons and the contracts between them. And that's, again, Penhallow versus Don's administrator. So, why do you think that all statutes are a fraud? That's exactly why, right there, because they don't have authority over living souls. So they have to create this fictitious entity so then they can railroad you into their kangaroo court. That's exactly what's going on. This is the Bill Priest in the Ninth Circuit. All codes, rules, and regulations are unconstitutional and lacking due process. That's a summary for those of you who are looking for that site. Uh, uh, this is uh, 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 the federal courts. The sovereignty of state does not reside in the persons who fill the different departments of its government, but in the people from whom the government emanated, and they may change it at their discretion. Sovereignty then in this country abides with the constituency and not with the agent, and this remark is true both in reference to the federal and state government. And this is uh, 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 federal codes. Uh, uh, and, and so this is a good example here. Let's uh, take a look at this. It says, the person, the term person, shall construe to mean and include an individual trust the state partnership association or corporation. Okay, so first of all, under uh, uh, justum generis, um, um, what's an individual? Okay, think about it. Under justum generis, an individual is a fictitious entity because all the rest of the things listed are fictitious entities. Number one. And then, number two, include these bell priests lay awake at night uh, uh, putting these statutes together because they want to make them as deceptive and fraudulent as possible. And so, uh, uh, really what it's saying, the person, uh, the term person shall be construed to mean and mean an individual trust estate, partnership, association, company, or corporation. Because, because include is limiting. But they want... The, the uh, brain dead ignorant sheeple out there to think that they're they're uh, included in this uh, thing. So it means it, it, most people will read it uh, because of their own ignorance and think that it applies to them. And this is, uh, uh, again, the codes, the federal bail priest codes. The word person and whoever includes corporations, companies, associations, firms, partnerships, societies, joint stock companies, as well as individuals. Well, again, under a justum generis, an individual is a fictitious entity, and, uh, and it doesn't include uh, anything else than what's listed. And, uh, and so then person and whoever, okay? person, this is the Texas Transportation Code, and uh, 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 it means an individual firm partnership uh, association or corporation, okay, so it's still fictitious entities, and that's all that's there, okay, person includes a corporation or organization, government, a government agency, subdivision or agency, business trust, 
uh, okay, it's all fictitious entities, and that's under the Texas government code. And then um, operator is is a person, okay? So it's a fictitious entity. They're talking about people that do it for pro, uh, 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 for uh, uh, hire, okay? That's exactly what it is, carrying passengers or property for hire. And that's exactly what they're talking about. P police officer means an officer authorized to arrest uh, direct traffic or arrest persons. Fictitious entities, a state. Uh, remember, we're talking about how uh, uh, in uh, Dones versus uh, Bidwell. And, and so uh, uh, when uh, referring to a part of the United States includes any state, district, commonwealth, territory, insular possession of the United States and any uh, area subject to the legislative authority of the United States of America, uh, and that's Texas government code. United States, including, uh, uh, includes a Department Bureau agency of the United States of America, okay? Again, that's Texas government code. So the United States is, is, is a corporation, okay? And that's found under uh, uh, 28 U.S.C. 11, the Articles of Confederation, uh, Canada acceding to this confederation and joining in the measures of the United States shall be admitted into and entitled to all the advantages of this union, but no other colony shall be admitted into the same unless uh, such admission be agreed to by nine states. And so, uh, and there's more evidence. Matter of fact, I've done a whole YouTube video about it. And uh, <clears throat> anyways, this is uh, section 541.002 of the Texas Government Code. And it says that state has uh, the meaning assigned by section 311.005 and includes the province of Canada. And this is uh, the Texas Government Code, Section 311.005, and it says in the underlined part, it says state, when referring to a part of the United States, includes any state, district, commonwealth, territory, or insular possession of the United States, and in an area subject to the legislative authority of the United States of America. And... Um, so uh, this is a revised code of Washington in this state and within this state in the state within the state includes all federal areas with lying within the exterior boundaries of the state and um, so what they're saying is that uh, includes is limiting so it means all federal areas this is the, the fraud that they deliberately put in these statutes to try and entrap people into their little codes into this so-called contract under their law merchant. Uh, Texas has a very similar section, uh, and, and this says, uh, this is Texas tax code. Uh, in this state means within the exterior limits of Texas, includes all territory within these limits ceded to or owned by the United States, and includes as limiting again. And so therefore, uh, uh, it's, it's federal jurisdiction. Um, and uh, Texas transportation code, the owner of a motor vehicle registered in this state, and uh, talks about how uh, the, the vehicles have to be registered in this state. Um, a person other than a person, let's see, it may operate more unless the person holds a driver's license. Got to have a driver's license in this state. Um, Texas Transportation Code again. Uh, a person may not operate a motor vehicle in this state unless they got insurance. Uh, a motor vehicle in this state has to have an inspection. Um, a municipal court uh, of record, uh, the judges have to be have two or more years experience practice law in this state. That's point four down there, Texas government code. An assistant prosecuting attorney must be licensed to practice law in this state, Texas government code again. To qualify for appointment as a judge, uh, a person must, uh, again it's a person, I have to be a resident and have to be in this state. Texas government code again. A board of law examiners, uh, uh, have to determine the eligibility of candidates for examination of a license to practice law in this state. Texas government code again. Um, Texas code of criminal procedure. Each law enforcement agency in this state. Um, and uh, the Office of Court Administration of Texas judicial system shall develop and maintain a model for a uniform written jury summons in this state. Juries are only in the federal areas of Texas. All real or tangible personal property in this state has jurisdiction to tax. Uh, this state has jurisdiction to tax real property if located in this state. Why do you think that they put a zip code on any mail on any mail that they send you uh, uh, and spell the name in all block capital letters? Okay, because they're talking to persons and it's in this state. They're fabricating evidence is what they're doing. That's exactly what they're doing. A warrant of arrest in this state. 
any magistrate in this state. That's Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. A search warrant in this state. Texas Code of Criminal Procedure. Uh, um, the fact that the laws uh, uh, relating to criminal procedure in this state, this is the emergency clause, and uh, uh, emergency is justification for nothing, but it's still in this state. It's in federal areas of Texas. The rule of decision in this state, federal areas of Texas, Texas Civil and Practice Code. The term, this is uh, the federal codes. Uh, the term United States, when used in a geographical sense, means any state, United States, District of Columbia, Commonwealth, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, Guam, America, and small Commonwealth, Northern Mariana Islands, any possession in the United States, and any waters within the jurisdiction of the United States. And so think about it. They're saying it three different times. Okay, so the term United States, when used uh, in the geographical sense, means any state of the United States. Okay, they said it first time there, and then they listed them all separately. District of Columbia, Guam, uh, American uh, Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, Guam, American Small Commonwealth, uh, Northern Mariana Islands, and then they say it a third time. Any possession of the United States and any waters, right? So that's all the federal, that's, that's all they said it three times. And uh, and it's all fraud because all they really need to do is say it once, but they want to make you think that it's something that it's not there. It's all a fraud. Uh, the term state uh, means any state in the United States, okay? And, and this is uh, this is uh, Title VI, which is uh, the border pigs. Um, anyways, um, uh, uh, they're saying it again here, the three times, okay? Any state in the United States, and then they list them all, and then any possession in the United States. That's, that's listed. It's the same thing. Whoever falsely and willfully represents himself to be a the United States, remember I told you at the very beginning in Title I, it says that whoever is a fictitious entity. And so uh, 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 whoever falsely and willfully represents himself to be a, a U.S. citizen uh, is a felon, basically. Uh, um, we can presume they know the law, either that or their supervisors have perjured their oath. Uh, this is uh, officers of the court of no immunity when violating a constitutional right. But again, if you're asleep at the wheel, uh, you don't even have a clue about what's going on, and they're just going to walk all over you. They're nothing but a bunch of thieves. They have no right to do anything to us except by the common law, uh, and, uh, and that's under Article 5 of Amendment. Uh, that we have no more right to decline the exercise of jurisdiction than to given than to usurp that which is not given the one or the other would be treason. So they engage in treason on a regular wholesale basis. They're foreign, or actually, uh, let me qual rephrase that, they're domestic enemies. Okay, that's exactly what they are. All these bail priests are domestic enemies, and, um, and they've sworn uh, an oath to protect us against them. Right, I believe you there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, they've all sworn an oath to protect uh, against uh, uh, the Constitution, against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and they are the domestic enemies. Residents, as distinguished from citizens, are aliens who are permitted to take up a permanent abode in the country, being bound to the society by reason they're dwelling in it. They're subject to its laws as long as they remain there. Why do you think they want to say, find out what your residence is? Where is your residence? Okay. Uh, anyways. Being protected by it, they must defend it, although they do not enjoy all the rights of citizenships. They have only certain privileges, which law or custom gives them. Permanent residents are those who have been given the right of perpetual residence. They are a sort of citizen of less privileged character and are subject to the society without enjoying all its privileges. Their children succeed to their status. For the right of perpetual residence given them by the state passes to their children. And this is the Law of Nations by Vattel, Book 1, Chapter 19, Section 213, page 87. And so, again, why do you think they want to know where your residence is? Okay? Because they're fabricating evidence. That's exactly what they're doing. If you're a resident, you're an alien. Okay? And they can do anything they want. You don't have any rights. Watch the video on citizenship. One does not necessarily become a non-resident by absconding or absenting himself from his place of abode. That's the Missouri Court of Appeals. Think about it. What they're saying is, is it's all in what you tell them. That's exactly what it is. It's all in what you tell them. Watch my video on jurisdiction. 
It is true that a common law, the duty of the Attorney General is to represent the king. He'd be the bottom end of the state. But on the democratic form of government now prevailing, the people are kings, so the Attorney General's duties are to that sovereign rather than to the machinery of government. And that's a uh, um, uh, Kentucky court case. Uh, uh, but these Attorney Generals, I mean, uh, nobody's holding them to their oath. So they just go ahead and do whatever they want to do. For uh, more on quasi-contracts, this is all about quasi-contracts. Uh, see uh, uh, quasi-contracts and 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 uh, the video on uh, quasi-contracts on and Roman civil law. Persons dealing with the government are charged with knowing uh, government statutes and regulations, and they assume the risk that government agents may exceed their authority and provide misinformation. That's the bail priest in the Ninth Circuit. All persons in the United States are chargeable with knowledge of the statutes at large. It is well established that anyone who deals with the government assumes the risk that the agent acting in the government's behalf has exceeded the bounds of their authority. And that's the bail priest in the Ninth Circuit again. And that's, again, persons. Persons who are not taxpayers and are not within the system and can obtain no benefit by following procedures described for taxpayers, such as filing a claims for refunds. And that's the bail priest in the Supreme Court. Uh, um... Uh, no, actually, that's not. That's uh, the Connecticut uh, courts, federal courts. Um, revenue laws are a code or a system and a regulation of tax assessment and collection. They relate to taxpayers and not to non-taxpayers. The latter are without their scope. No procedures are prescribed for non-taxpayers and no attempt is made to annul any of their rights or remedies in due course of law. With them, Congress does not assume to deal. They are neither the subject nor the object of the revenue laws. That's the bail priest, the federal bail priest. So let's look at some color of law in Canada in these, these Canada border pigs. Uh, uh, this is uh, unemployment insurance. When they overturned the Unemployment Insurance Act in 1937, this is the Privy Council that's talking in England, okay? And it still may be legislating affecting the classes of subjects enumerated in Section 92, and if so, it would be ultra vires. In other words, Dominion legislation, even though it deals with Dominion property, they're saying it right there, okay? Their statutes only deal with their property. Are you their property? Hello? yet may be so framed to invade, you know, all of their classes and crap. It is not necessary that it should be a colorable device. They're giving them the recipe here, boys and girls. These, uh, uh, the Privy Council is making a colorable device. That's what they're saying. It is not necessary that it should be a colorable device. They're giving them the recipe. There's 358 court cases that can leave that say they have to have the appearance of justice. There's even more cases in the U.S. The appearance of justice is not justice, it's a fraud. Prima facie, at first sight, on appearance, on the face of it, so far as can be judged, or from the first disclosure. Presumably, a fact presumed to be true, unless disproved by some evidence to the contrary. Okay, so... Remember, we already talked about presumptions. It's all about martial law. It's all about fraud. That's all they do is fraud. These people are the lowest form of life there is. Canada, for greater certainty, includes the internal waters of Canada and the territorial sea of Canada. Person or any word or expression descriptive of a person includes a corporation. Well, hello, boys and girls. Canada is the internal waters of Canada, the territorial sea of Canada, and a person is a corporation. Why do you think those Canada border pigs converted me into a corporation? Every one person, owner, and similar expressions include the bitch and a corporation. Municipality includes a corporation, city, town, town, village, township, county, parish, or upper ter territorial or local subdivision or province, the inhabitants of which are incorporated or entitled to hold property collectively for a public purpose. That's, the, th that's actually true. Okay, That's about the only thing that's true in their communist statutes. Person includes a corporation, heirs, executors, and ministers, or other legal representatives of a person. That's the, the Canada border pigs. That's the Alberta, the Alberta bail priests, uh, Tillman, and Redmond, and those pigs. Uh, that's their statutes. Driver means a person who is driving or actual physical control, control of vehicle. Again, it's a fictitious entity, boys and girls. That's the pigs in Alberta. 
No enactment is binding on the bitch or accepts or uh, the bitch's rights or prerogatives in any manner unless the enactment expressly states that it binds the bitch. And that's the Interpretation Act. Requirement of a driver's license. This is Manitoba. A person. Okay, it's talking about a person again. May not drive a motor vehicle. A fictitious entity. They're talking about carrying passengers or property for hire. In an enactment, owner includes a person. And that's 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 a BC Motor Vehicle Act. Driver under in BC, and this is this is uh, 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 how these bail priests like to lay awake at night, dreaming up all sorts of complicated ways of saying it, so they can make sure that there's they they reel in lots of suckers. Driver means uh, a driver uh, means a driver who holds driver's license uh, on which condition is imposed and includes any such person. In every act and regulation, person includes a corporation. That's Ontario. And this act, driver, means a person, and that's Ontario. And this is uh, the Public Utilities Act of Ontario, of any person. And it goes on and says how they can disconnect the power if they don't, uh, if they don't uh, uh, pay the bill. And think about it. Why do you think they want government-issued ID before they'll hook you up? Okay, because they want to fabricate evidence that you're one of the slaves. In this act, Indian means a person. That's all about slavery, boys and girls. And this is another Indian act of Canada. Elector means a person. And this is the, the Charter of uh, Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, which is actually a charter of slavery. Nothing in this charter, uh, the rights and freedoms referred into it, are guaranteed equally to male or female persons. Okay? This is all about slavery. This is what these, the bitch and her hired thugs are doing. In other words, Dominion legislation, even though it deals with Dominion property, okay? Their legislation deals with their property. It's all a fraud. It's color of law. It means nothing. They're a bunch of pigs. And this is uh, words and phrases judicially decided in Canadian courts. Uh, the word Canada is used in Section 91 of the Constitution Act. It uh, does not refer to Canada as a geographical unit, but refers to the federal, juristic federal unit, and the federal unit's a corporation. And uh, uh, this is uh, what happened. Okay, now look at this. This is an act to impose taxes and commerce only, and that's... The, the, the tyrant pig, George III, okay, this is the War of Independence, okay? And so this is George III, Chapter 12, 1778. Two years after the Declaration of Independence, the pig goes and passes this statute, and it says, whereas taxes, by, taxation by the Parliament for the purpose of raising revenue has been found by experience to occasion great uneasiness and disorders, well, no joke, Batman! that from and after the passing of the act of the king and parliament of Great Britain will not impose any duty, tax, or assessment, whatever, payable in any of his majesty's colonies, provinces, or plantations in North America, except such duties that may be expedient to impose for the regulation of commerce, like the border pigs. Offenses, and then the, this is another one, 1803, an act to extend the jurisdiction of the courts of justice. What a joke. It's the courts of injustice is what it is. The bail priests and the Vatican. Offenses committed within any of the Indian territories shall be tried in the same manner as if committed within the provinces of Lower and Upper Canada. Place and manner trial of such offenders not being subject of the bitch uh, and also within the limits shall be acquitted. And this is the pigs when they stole my truck. And the seizure receipts when they stole my truck and demanded $2,500 in extortion to get it back. Let's get up a little closer. It says, commercial, the fucking pigs. This is all about trust law. Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1856 edition. Trusts, contracts, devises, an equitable right title or interest in property, real or personal, distinct from its legal ownership, uh, is a personal obligation for uh, paying, delivering, or performing anything where the person trusting has no real right or security for by that act which he confides the other altogether to the faithfulness of those entrusted. Okay? It's equity. It's satanic. It's coming from the bail priest. It's coming from the Vatican. 
This is taken from uh, uh, the, uh, the an act to enact the D.C. Code, which is, uh, it's uh, right here. It's uh, March 3rd, uh, an act to establish the Code of Law for the District of Columbia, March 3rd, 1901, uh, located at 31 Stat 1189. Okay, and it says in Section uh, 1617, Chapter 56, Section 15, 6, 6, 1617, uh, um, it says the legal estate to be in a cystic use, okay? A use is short for usufruct, which is a trust, boys and girls. It's a cystic trust. That's in the D.C. Code. And this is uh, taken from the next one, is taken from the Congressional Record, uh, June 13, 1967. A citizen of the United States is a civilly dead entity operating as co-trustee and co-beneficiary of the public charitable trust, the constructive cystic trust of U.S. Inc. under the 14th Amendment, which upholds the debt of the USA and U.S. Inc. And then there's uh, uh, Henry Bolins, which is a uh, northeast, northwest court case, uh, probably Minnesota or somewhere around there. Uh, every taxpayer is assessed to a trust having sufficient interest in preventing abuse of the trust to be recognized in the field of this court's prerogative jurisdiction. So they convert you into a trust so they can assault you and steal your property. And this is uh, further in that act, that's chapter 854, 56 Congress, uh, um, and it's an act to establish a code of law for the District of Columbia, and it says, and be it further enacted, that in the interpretation and construct of the said code, the following rules shall be observed. Third, the word person shall be held to apply to partnerships and corporations. they got to convert you into a corporation so they can steal your property. Everything they do is under probate law. It's for dead things. A person is a dead thing. Are you a dead thing? There's certain words these pigs like to use. Residence, traffic, commissioner, drive, human, liberty, mail. These are all words you've been trained to use. What do you think the public education system is for? It's not an education system. It's an indoctrination system. Many law enforcement agents, agencies organizations deliberately screen out higher intelligent individuals during their screening process and and Jordan versus City of New London is a perfect example they, that's why they have the tests they want a brain dead idiot they want some murders to, 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 so, to create business for their for their bail priests in the courts Jordan had a master's degree and scored too high on his test Jordan versus City of New London uh, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit case, and uh, there's the reference. You go look it up. There's lots of YouTube videos about police assaulting people for jaywalking. Obama administration is said to be requiring officials to sign a form stating they'll fall orders to fire on Americans. It seems that almost every day there's a news story about some pig murdering somebody and getting away with it. The burden's on the defendant to show the non-existence of jurisdictional facts. Once jurisdiction is challenged, it must be proven. Mere good faith assertions of power and authority have been abolished, and no sanction can be imposed absent jurisdiction. These pigs assault you, and then they make you prove that you, they don't have jurisdiction. There's color of money, which is fake money, Federal Reserve notes, Bank of Canada notes, it's all a fraud. There's color of justice, which is the appearance of justice. It's all a fraud. There's color of title, which is the appearance of title. It's a fraud. There's color of law, which is the appearance of law. It's a fraud. Everything's a fraud. Everything's a lie. What's a fraud? These are maxims of law. What's a fraud? Always a fraud. Things invalid from the beginning cannot be made valid by some subsequent act. A thing void in the beginning does not become valid by lapse of time. Time cannot render valid an act void at its origin. These are all maxims of law taken from Black's Law Dictionary, 9th edition. Out of fraud, no action arises. It's all a fraud. And any act by any government official to conceal a fraud becomes an act of fraud. It is a fraud to conceal a fraud. And fraud is inexcusable and unpardonable. 
fraud and deceit should excuse no man. These are all uh, uh, maxims of law. That's These are taken from Bouvier's maxims of law. Any of fraud amounts to injustice. Fraud and justice never dwell together. And that's uh, a Black's Law Dictionary, Maxims of Law. And what otherwise is good and just is sought by force or fraud becomes bad and unjust. And that's Bouvier's Maxims of Law. Everything these satanic courts do is a fraud. They're not competent to do justice. They're nothing but thieves and pirates and murderers. Out of this is brought, and all of this is brought to us by bar members. See my bar members videos one and two. See bar members affidavit. 08-2013, that's recorded with the Pinal County Recorder at fee number 2013-039716. Look it up. It's on the internet. Read it. First satanic foreign agents of the Vatican bar members infiltrate America and, and filtrate into key positions in every government, every major corporation in the country. See the bar members videos. Then Masonic Satanists in the courts make ruling like Dred Scott versus Sanford that say that certain races are not entitled to common law rights. Then in 1871, without any authority, the Satanists create a fraudulent, fictitious corporation called United States that's located in the District of Columbia. See the bankrupt corporate so-called governments video. Then the Satanists turn citizenship into the opposite of what the Founding Fathers intended. See the Do You Know Who You Are video uh, with their D.C. only so-called 14th Amendment by creating corporate slave citizenship and all subsequent amendments are D.C. amendments only. Then the Satanists pass D.C. statutes called the Bank Act, certain tax acts, and to pay interest on the debt, which is a fictitious D.C. debt. Then the Satanists pass Federal Reserve Act in the middle of the night on Christmas Eve with legislative chicanery designed to deny a proper quorum of Congress the opportunity to review or debate it. Then, less than 20 years after the Federal Reserve Act is passed, on, in March of 1933, the satanic banksters bankrupt their fraudulent corporation so they can simultaneously put it under martial law rule. See the bankrupt corporate so-called governments video and the we are under martial law rule video. Then the Satanists seize the gold and force their satanic courts into their satanic equity jurisdiction because they can presume that nothing's ever paid for. Then the satan Satanists compel filing fees to fabricate evidence of their corporate citizen slave in order to deny an Article III court in favor of an Article I military tribunal with the associated royalties for their so-called judge that's a clerk masquerading as a judge. He's a pig. Then the Satanists get control of the educational system to dumb down the people. Then the Satanists get their own and operated sorcerers to peddle all sorts of potions like fluoride in the water to further dumb down the people in support of their mind control efforts. Then the Satanists hire low intelligence thugs order takers to go out and assault people to create business for their satanic courts, to generate revenue for their banksters, to fabricate evidence of their fraudulently created corporate slave citizenship status, because then their bail priest officers and their satanic courts can call it a contract. See the Unidroid video and the quasi-contracts in Roman civil law video. In doing this, I shall have occasion incidentally to events how true it is that states and governments were made for man, and at the same time how true it is that his creatures and servants at first deceived, next vilified, and at last oppressed their master and maker. A state like a merchant makes a contract. A dishonest state like a dishonest merchant willfully refuses to discharge it. They're nothing but thieves. It's all about slavery. A person is a slave. Either you're the king or you're a slave and there's nothing in between. If you participate in their color of law statutes, then you've agreed to be their slave. It's only involuntary servitude that's not lawful. We discussed all statutes are color of law. All statutes are voluntary. All statutes are full of fraud. The kangaroo courts are there to enforce the contract. The kangaroo courts are not competent to do justice. 
the absolute best that could be expected is the appearance of justice, which is a fraud. We, the people, are negligent in our responsibility to provide justice to our fellow man. I am benign being denied justice because of all the brain-dead idiots out there. We, the people, have abdicated our responsibility. So what can we do? Well, we can lay a proper foundation so they cannot claim ignorance. We can demand a common law court. We can know what a true common law court is. So we can tell if they really give you a common law court because we know they're liars and thieves and, uh, and like to play these games. We can complain to the council of whores. Make sure you bring up the right issues. We can complain to politicians. We need to work together to fire these Vatican Jesuit whores selling their justice. And uh, we need to uh, uh, provide justice to our fellow men. Make, we can uh, uh, make videos and circulate them far and wide. Send videos to me. I'll circulate them. Realize it is never over until you over, till you say it's over. Never, ever, ever give up. And this is a, a, a clip art that I got. And um, I think it speaks for itself. Never, ever give up. It's never over till you say it's over. Always remember, we the people are the ones who are really in court control. Not a gang of Vatican judicial whores selling their justice. Not their hired thugs. Not the Canada border pigs. Not the United Nations border pigs. Even a peace officer can do nothing that we ourselves cannot do. We can refuse to participate in their de facto system. We can educate ourselves about what a common law jury is and what the law of the land is. We can educate ourselves so we know when our rights are being violated. We can educate our public servants because many of them do not know any more than we did. We can educate other people by circulating this video in any other way possible. We can demand a common law jury of our peers. We can work with our friends and neighbors to reestablish our common law juries and our common law de jure courts. We can work with our friends and neighbors to get the United Nations out of America and Canada and anywhere that wants to be free. The United Nations owned and operated by the bankster thieves and their Vatican handlers. Other videos to watch? Bankster thieves, one, two, and three. Churchianity, bankrupt corporate, so-called governments. Bar members, one and two. Unidroit, we're under martial law rule video. Some of these are at YouTube, and some of them are at, uh, at Vimeo. I'm going to start uploading them to Vimeo, so be sure and check uh, Sovereignty International profile at Vimeo. Uh, Quasi-contracts in Roman civil law, de facto courts. All courts are ecclesiastical courts, D.C. courts in Texas, and jurisdiction. Upcoming videos, Churchianity in the Vatican, Satanists in Texas, Void Judgments, How to Do a Habeas Corpus, Dealing with the Traffic Court Thieves, number two, uh, uh, does your government the ultimate solution? Common law, the District of Columbia is masquerading as the government of the United States of America. Copy of these documents can be found at my private group at Yahoo called Administrating Your Public Servants. I have YouTube videos that are videos of private information shares that show these and other court citations that are available for donation. I've also got Vimeo videos. I need to add that in. Donations to support this work are appreciated. I prefer gold or silver coin, but as an extremely less desirable alternative, I can accept IOUs, which is uh, a fake money, you know, Federal Reserve notes, PayPal gifts, checks, money orders, etc. Send me an email for particulars. Send me an email for uh, uh, other copies of other documents. The email address is up on the front page on the first slide on this presentation. I appreciate you uh, uh, taking the time to watch this video and uh, and I hope you got something out of it and I hope you all really have a real nice day. What's the alternative? Thanks for watching. Have a great day.